Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another large block ship, and this one is called the SSI Wayfarer, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a fairly large ship that puts many of the new blocks to very good use. At the front there, you can see some of the rounded window blocks, and on the inside, we've got the encased ladders that lead all the way up from the bottom floor to the cockpit. But I'll show you that a bit later. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the SSI Wayfarer is 1,804 large blocks using pretty much all the DLC packs. We can also see here a nice lot of information about it on the Steam Workshop page, such as the lore behind it and what it can do. So just give this thing a thumbs up, we'll move all the way around towards the very front here, have a quick look around the outside, have a quick tour of the interior, fly around for a bit, then maybe slam it into a mountainside. So right in the middle, we've got ourselves a searchlight, just looking around, lighting up all the darkness. Then right next to it, we've got a set of windows where we can just about peer inside. Over on the left-hand side, we can see a piston system. This is how we're going to load up with ease all of our cargo containers in this ship. If you were just to come all the way down, see it's a bunch of cylindrical columns that come onto a conveyor tube, onto a magnetic plate, and this is our landing gear. So instead we have that traditional landing gear block, for some great use of our magnetic plates. Anyway, if we just come all the way up to here and start to move onto the side, this is one of two hydrogen thruster pods. So we've got one on that side, one on this side. We've got three hydrogen thrusters in the middle, then a bunch of window blocks just surrounding it for some additional decoration. We also got some lovely blue rusted blocks making up the main portion of the ship. And if we were to come onto the side, we'll see even more hydrogen thruster. There's some more rusted blast or edge blocks just surrounding those. Got ourselves a heat vent, which should light up when we start to fly this thing around. Over onto this section, we've got some more conveyor tubes that come onto our warfare batteries, and some great use of our beam blocks with some atmospheric thrusters just sticking out the bottom. Then got another heat vent, another hydrogen thruster, then around towards the very back here, we've got a bunch of grey blocks. So we've got one hell of a lot of conveyor tubes that come across onto some more hydrogen thrusters, and this is our main thrust to push us around. In the middle of all the hydrogen thrusters, we've got a exhaust block shooting out some smoke. Then on the top of it, we've got some more steel blocks just to give it a bit of protection. But if we were to come all the way into the middle, what we've got is a bunch of stairs to come up. These stairs are attached on via a hinge that'll lift up and down, depending on the button you press in the cockpit. We can also see a bunch of catwalks starting to walk all the way around this, with some stairs leading up to the top floor. So if you did need to do maintenance work on this, you've got easy access up to that. Then if we were to come and start to look down, that is what we get. So there's the cover on the back of our hydrogen thrusters. There's some more pointing up to help push us down in space. Over here where our stairs come up, we've got a custom turret, which is the only form of protection on this ship. We also got a couple of cargo freight crates in there, just for you to store a few bits and bobs. Could be useful to throw a couple of tools in there, like the non-elite tools in there, so you just quickly run up to this box, grab them, start repairing stuff up, and then put them back in once you're done. So if you do lose them in combat, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Over to this section, we've got some stairs to come up to some solar panels. Then onto this part where our antenna is sitting, we've got one hell of a lot of jumble of different blocks. So we've got beam blocks, we've got neon tubes, we've got cylindrical columns, and it all appears to be in small block form. That's what that looks like. So we can see our neon tubes, we can see our cylindrical columns, our small steel blocks. That just comes all the way across over towards the very front here. We've got some small window blocks, or the barred window blocks even, and even more neon tubes. If we were to come all the way onto the opposite side, instead of having all those small blocks, we've instead got these white blocks, which is above our main bridge, our main cockpit of how we're going to drive this thing around, as well as our ladder shaft that leads all the way down to the bottom of the ship to allow you to get out. On the very edge, it is identical with another solar panel and catwalk setup. And all the way at the front there, that's what we get. It was just to drop down and come underneath this thing, that's what we get if we ignore all the grass. So we're simply going to see a lot of beam blocks, a lot of cylindrical columns, and one hell of a lot of hydrogen thrusters and magnetic plates. Right in the middle there, that's our stairs to get all the way up. And there's our hydrogen thrusters at the very back. If you were to just have a quick look on this side, it is identical to the other. So there's our conveyor tubes going onto our warfare batteries. There's some hydrogen thrusters for our blast or edge blocks. And with that all done and out of the way, I now just grab hold of my character, we can go around the inside. Yes, it does look bloody fantastic how it's all been set up. I'm always a big fan of the rusted ship look. I don't know what it is about it. I think it might just be the additional detail on the block skin itself, which adds quite a lot to its ships. We can come all the way past it. That's our hydrogen thrusters. That's our exhaust blocks. 
and here is our lovely little stairs to come all the way up. Now the ground is very uneven as you can see from the magnetic plates, I tried to get as level as possible, so we'll need to do a little jump just to get up onto these steps. Got a lovely arrow pointing inside, there is our hinge to lift this up and down, before we go all the way in, we just come all the way around past these little catwalks, around to here, up the steps, and we'll go visit that turret we saw earlier. So the turret has got two auto cannons on it, we've got two unfinished hinges acting as little ammo belts on the side, there's a camera in the middle, and some fantastic use of our small unfinished armoured plate, which is adding as additional detail around the base. And over here is our cargo freight crates, where we can store a few bits and bobs inside, I'm not too sure why I've got galley ammo boxes on me. And all the small block stuff, right here. Anyway, we can now walk up these blocks, and get a little toasty next to this hydrogen thruster. Coming all the way down and up these steps, here is our solar panel, so we've got easy access to maintenance work on this. And all the way down, we'll come down the other side here, and we'll head on inside. All the way across, opening up this doorway, we now got a double door from an airlock, we cannot open this door until that is closed up behind us, and we are using a script to control the doors, so you don't have to do anything. And this is what we get on the inside. So we have to open up this door first of all, we then come into our little armory locker room, we've got ourselves a survival kit, we've got a desk, and we've got a small little lab table right here. We also got a neon tube right through the middle of the room, acting as a small light source, and we've got a little window of where we just were. And we can now come out of this and over to the other side of the room, opening up this, then got a warfare reactor, a cargo container, another freight crate. We can see, I can't remember what that is, I think that's a time block right there. There's another freight crate, and there is a conveyor block. We have to come all the way out of this and move towards the front. To our right, we then got a gravity generator so we won't float away in space. There is a programmable block showing us the whips, auto door, and LL script. Coming forward, we've got a small little lunch room with our little kitchen block right in the corner. Over here, we've got a fantastic view out the front. If we have to turn around next to our vending machine, we've got our ladder to go all the way up to the top. But we can come through this door first of all. So opening up this, we come to a small living quarter type room, we've got a desk and chair set up, there is a tripod, there's our bed to sleep on, another set of lockers, the final part of this room is a toilet and shower set up. We're going to come back out of this and over to the ladder shaft, we now move all the way up to our bridge. Looking all the way around, we've got some neon troops once again behind us, we've got some small programmable blocks, where we can see our whips turret radar, the artificial horizon, and then right in the middle here, we then got our planetary compass, just in case you need it. Towards the front here, this is what we get, a bunch of small LCD screens telling you everything about the ship that you need to know, the left seat is how we're going to fly this thing around, the right seat is how we're going to control the turret. So getting into that first of all, first person view, that's what we get. So looking up, we can see our logo, the time of day, our compass and our gravity, bring up the HUD, 1, 2 and 3 is for our turret, then 4 and 5 is for our searchlight, pressing number 1, that'll take control over the turret and we can now find the auto cannons like so. Pressing number two is going to be for the AI controlled on and off, then number three is for the target lock on, but there's no target set, so it's not going to do anything. Press number four, this is going to be our searchlight to take manual control over it, so if you do need to pinpoint light into an area, you can do, so it just very quickly changes to night time. We now move this light all the way around, and put the spotlight on someone. Anyway, coming out of that, pressing number five, that'll simply turn off the spotlight to stop it auto-rotating, so now you can see it just sitting there facing forwards, pressing that back on, and I'll continue to look around by itself. Hopping out of this seat, coming over to this one, this is our main controls, where we'll have to turn on the hydrogen thrusters, which will kick up a lot of smoke. There we go, all the hydrogen thrusters, amateur thrusters have been turned on, we can press number one, which is going to be for our piston system at the front there, to extend it all the way out. That's so you don't have to go all the way up to a station and risk damaging your blocks or the station itself. You've now got some great clearance to be able to dock up. Number two is to lock and lock that connector. Number three is going to be for our ramp at the back there. I'll simply lift all the way up, remove it from the ground so if you did have to land on uneven surfaces, you don't have to risk damaging that as you're landing. Number four and number five is then for our spotlight to stop it rotating on and off. Number five is to simply lock and unlock our landing gears at the back there. Number seven and number eight is then for our turret controls once again where 7 is simply to lock on, and number 8 is to let the AI take over. Number 9 is in for our antenna on and off, and on tap number 2, 3 and 4 we've got nothing else, so now we can fly this thing around. Just lifting all the way off, off the ground here, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world because it is intended to be a cargo ship, and speaking of cargo ships, I suppose you should find the cargo containers on this. 
So there we go, we can see we've got two large cargo containers right there, and then a couple of small ones, so we can fit a nice lot of stuff on this. Anyway, moving forwards, this is what we get. Like I said, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but it seems to get the job done. It's not too slow, that could change it if you are full up with a bunch of resources. Coming to a stop, we seem to be slightly faster, which is always nice, especially if you're charging along towards the station full of resources. You want to make sure you stop before you slam into it and lose everything. Moving left, that's what we get, and moving right, again, some nice speed with that. Moving down, this is going to be affected by gravity, but that's the speed we get, we are extremely fast. And moving up, we are very fast, in fact, I think that's the fastest thing on this ship, which is very good, So as you saw there, we almost slammed into the ground. In first person view, and then we're getting miles around, this is what we get. Got a little bit of weight on here, it's not too overbearing, it's got enough for you to manoeuvre this thing around with some speed. Yes, it's not a small fighter, but then again, it's not intended to be. And there we go, that is it for the SSI Wayfarer, I'm pretty sure I covered everything on this. It's an absolute fantastic ship, I absolutely love the mishmash of everything going on with it, especially the small block on large grid, it works so well. Apart from the little wiggling at the top there, but there's not too much you can actually do about that. But anyway, there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do because it is a fantastic looking ship, it's got everything you need to survive in survival mode, especially if you are looking for something fancy to use as a cargo ship, transport stuff from one place to another, or maybe even just do the outpost missions We need to move a lot of goods to get paid. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.